Hi everybody, it's Stephanie here with Seed Sprout Grow today. Um, I'm gonna be showing you how to dry can and raw pack some small Yukon Gold potatoes for storage and canning. Um, got my potatoes here. They're still covered with dirt. We've got to wash them all off. Um, they are not very big. It's maybe about 10, 15 pounds and the biggest one is the size of a fist but most of them are even smaller than that. We had multiple beds of potatoes this year that we tried a different technique on. And unfortunately one of the beds got some insect damage. So I pulled it early. So we've got these little baby potatoes. They're gonna be perfect for canning. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I do that today. Before we get started though, I really want to make sure that you know I'm not a professional in any way. This canning technique is not a approved canning technique by the canning authorities. So before you use this technique, please make sure that you research it for your family and make sure that it's right for you um, and know that you are doing what you need to do. Okay, let's get to it. So I change up my technique just a bit. I filled this bowl of water with some of the potatoes um, and I'm scrubbing them. This bowl seems to be helping um, soak the pre-soak the dirt since it's dried on a little. Um, these potatoes have not been cured. They were fresh from my ground yesterday. Um, so what you'll see is that a little bit of the skin is scraping off, not too much, but this is not gonna affect our potatoes at all. They'll can up just fine. It's your choice when you dry can to peel your potatoes or not peel. I prefer a non-peeled potato, it's a lot easier, but also we like the peel. But if a little bit of peel comes off, it's not a big deal. Um, you could peel your whole potato. You also um, are going to want to cut up your potato if that's how you want it before it goes into the jar. So if you're trying to make potato wedges for home fries or french fry cuts, um, potato cubes, or even, I don't know if you can do shredded potatoes actually, you may want to check on that, but if you want to shred them, you do that before they go into the jar. We are leaving these potatoes whole because they're so small and they're just perfectly sized for canning anyway. So after I'm done removing them from this, I'll give them one more quick rinse and then we will move on to the next step. Okay, so our potatoes are done and clean. This is what we've got. There are some pretty decent sized ones. <laughs> there are some tiny little baby guys. Um, I just didn't have the heart to get rid of them because they were trying so hard and sadly we had to pull it early. So the next step that we're gonna do is you need to soak them in cold water. Um, each soak is gonna take about 20 minutes. Then you're gonna pour it off, re-soak it. For these guys, I'm gonna soak three times, so about an hour. You're soaking it to make sure that the starch has come out. Because these are baby potatoes that were not um, full-sized, they are gonna be a lot less starchy than a full-sized potato will. So we, three times, probably even a, a little bit of overkill, but I had a bad experience. Um, this is a potatoes that I canned a couple months ago from some russet potatoes that were going bad in the fridge and I needed to get rid of them. A very starchy potato. I only soaked these one time. You can see how brown uh, the potato got. It's discolored, it doesn't look good. It doesn't affect the quality of the potato. It still tastes like a potato. It's still safe to eat, but it doesn't look good. So um, I learned my lesson. We're gonna soak these three times. If you have a starchier potato or you have cut potatoes that you're trying to do that have more surface area for the starches to come out, you're gonna wanna soak more. Basically until your water is running off clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the first soak and we'll take you through that. Okay, so these guys are on their first soak. They are under cold, cold water. Our water comes out very cold. If yours doesn't, you may wanna add ice to this pot. This is just my pressure canning pot because it's the biggest pot I have. Um, and they're gonna soak for 20 minutes. We're gonna do it three times.
Okay, so in order to pressure can, you do need to fill your pot with some water. I believe it's three quarts, but your pot will have a marking on it of where you need to fill it to. Every pot's different, so make sure that you check yours. Then you do add um, two tablespoons of vinegar if you don't want any kind of stain on yours. I just kind of eyeball it. It's about two tablespoons. So uh, any kind of hard water stains won't stain your jars. And here's our finished product. These are the potatoes we're gonna can up. I don't know how many quarts it's gonna make exactly, but we're gonna do quarts. So for each quart, we're gonna put in a tablespoon of butter and one teaspoon of salt with the whole potatoes. That's the only liquid or anything that we're putting into the jar besides the potatoes. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and jar up our potatoes now. So we're gonna try to fill our jars as full as we can with these potatoes. Try to organize them so that you have as little space as possible, which is somewhere where these tiny little guys are gonna come in handy. Push them down in there. You're gonna wanna leave an inch of head space in your quart jar. I'm not certain what it is for pint jars. I've never done pints, so go ahead and check that. Try to get it as close to that inch of head space as you can. Sorry, my son's in the back playing with his toys. Tablespoon of butter, so a pat, and a teaspoon of, make sure that it is canning or pickling salt. And that is all that's gonna go in that jar. Okay, so once you have all of your jars full, you're gonna to go to your last step, which is actually putting it in the pressure canner. This is a cold pressure canner. There's cold water in it. These are cold jars. Do not he start heating your pressure canner or heating your water until your jars are in it. Otherwise, you're gonna have issues with cracking and sealing. Um, these are raw packs, so nothing's been heated yet. So cold and cold will work. So you're gonna take your jar, you're going to get a little cloth with water or I like to use vinegar just because we've got butter that we're using which is a fat and the vinegar will cut that fat. You wipe off the lid, the rim of your jar. I always keep a little tiny um, water bath going with my lid so that they're warm when I apply them to the jar. Um, that will help your rubber seal. So you get your lid out of the jar. This is just a magnet that comes with most canning sets. Here's the jar I'm working with here. Get your lid out. Center it on your jar. Okay, it's okay that that butter is sticking up over the inch mark. It's going to melt almost immediately. Then you take your lid and oh, a little twisted. Okay, you screw finger tight. Okay, then that one goes in my pressure canner. This is the Presto, I think 23 quart. It can hold seven quart jars. So luckily all my potatoes filled exactly seven quart jars. That never happens. I'm gonna fill these up, put them in, and show you the last step um, towards canning.
Okay, so now that all my jars are in there, I'm gonna start bringing this up to heat. I don't wanna give a tutorial in this one on how to pressure can because I'm not an expert myself. I'm a relative novice. So um, I'm gonna skip all of the steps for this. I want you to read your pressure canner and watch experts so that you know how to do this step. But I will say we're gonna vent steam this for 10 minutes once it gets to boiling. I'm gonna cover it in just a sec. And then for quartz, we are gonna can um, for 40 minutes. For us here in the mountains, we can at 12 pounds pressure. So make sure that you check whatever your pressure that you need to can at is for your elevation. But this will be the last step and I will show you when we are done what they all look like. Okay, and here is the finished product. These just came out of the canner. They look beautiful. Um, looks a little brown on the outside, but that's just because the skin is still on them and it's all cooked up. If you look close, you can see the flesh is still white. So it looks like we got all the starch out. Um, can't wait to try these. We're gonna leave them sitting here for 24 hours and then we will take the rings off to store them, making sure that all of the tops have popped. A lot of the tops have already popped since they've been out. I think there's only three that haven't popped yet. So excited to try these. Hope that you have good luck when you do yours.